What's going on, B1 family? So I'm exhausted, but you, um, you guys have been showing a lot of love. So I want to make sure I get you uh, a lot of updates on Tariq Hill, um, some of the post DNC, not DNC, but some of the post uh, presidential debate. Um, I also reinforced that, hey, you know, we're not the only ones out here stomping the yard for uh, reparations, for tangibles all together and to get these legals out of our neighborhoods uh, also some black achievements you know um things that are past that we can do in the present and also we still got to show that there's still some stepping fetches all right it's not 100 percent. we always got to be on our p's and q's we always got to be listening to what people say and how they say it uh, we just have to stay ever vigilant all right but we're gonna get it done we're gonna get the reparations we gonna get it, all right. We gonna, you feel me? We gonna get it. B one. Neglecting us and giving to them, people that they don't know who they are. I asked them, is there any type of vetting process for them to come over here from Texas to Chicago? They told me no. When I said this to Alderman Vasquez, he lied to my face, and he told me that they are being vetted. When I asked them, they said they're not being vetted. They said no names have been taken. They just got put on a bus and shipped over here. That's why there's gangs over here now. This is why there's gangs roaming the streets. I asked them, is there any type of regulation? Is there any type of uh, police oversight or, or curfew? They told me no. This is why they're able to do whatever they want to do. Break into stores, vandalize, break into cars, run people over with cars that they steal from people, children. These people come from countries that traffic in drugs and children that our government is subsidizing while they're telling us that we need to be sympathetic to them. They're putting them in our community, the black communities. We have to take the blunt of all of this, of this illegal immigration. And we're getting told that we're the bad guys if we have any complaint for it. For years, the government has said that they were going to do something to the south side and the west side. And every single time they say, well, you know, it's not in the budget right now. We need more votes. It's a process. It's this, it's that. Yet illegal immigrants come over and millions of dollars out of uh, apparently nowhere gets to go to them. Criminal or non-criminal, it doesn't matter. They still get to go to them. Adults my age, these are not old men and old ladies with little babies. Not most of them, no. These are adults my age that our government neglects the citizens of, the veterans sleeping on the uh, streets, and they're giving to them. These people are preying on the elderly in our community. We've seen that time and time again, all of that's been docu uh, documented. They're preying on the children, not just in Chicago, in New York, in Colorado. The government has neglected us, and we have the list of everybody who has approved of it, everybody who has voted for it, everybody who lies to our face. We're tracking everything, and your seats is up. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them. Like, And it's going to get bigger, and it's only going to get worse. In Springfield... They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. Can you please tell me what black woman vice president um, he has? You do realize that that's an Indian woman, right? A self-proclaimed South Asian Indian woman. I really hope you understand this. Her mother is Indian. Her father is Indian. He was born in Jamaica. Same way there's Asians that's there who's born in Jamaica. That don't make them black. My man, you really are bugging with what you're saying. It makes no sense. And you talk about you coming over here with facts. Where are they? Because the biggest thing with all of this is where are her policies at? And you're showing that you're voting for her because of because of the color of her skin and not that she would actually be good for the country. 
And I'm going to ask you, like I ask every single person that plans on voting for Kamala Harris, this one question. If she was the first person to drop out when she ran, she had a presidential run, mind you, representing California, she didn't get one delegate from California, not one. And she had 844 votes. Please tell me how she's going to trans how she's going to pretty much transform 844 votes into 80 plus million. I'll wait. Come pick some cotton with me. Now, I know what you're thinking. What on earth is she picking cotton for? <laughs> if you wanted me to be quirky, I'd say it's in my DNA. But the truth of the matter is, it's in my household. And as someone who loves a cotton stuffed mattress and is out here, you cannot tell me I wasn't born to pick cotton. <laughs> yes, she is married to a white man. And it's relationships like this that give interracial dating a bad name, right? Because you're making light of or making jo jokes about you being a black woman picking cotton on a farm. What the fuck is funny about it? What is funny about the history of black people picking cotton in this country? I want to hear it. I want to I want to hear it. I want to know. I want to laugh too. And it's like, so she's aware of the stereotype that's attached to it. I think that when it comes to these interracial relationships, there is a little bit of a responsibility until we get to a certain place in America and we're not there. We're not there. We're not there. Where we have healed from our past, we are fully recovered, and to where there are people who are not still alive who have had to deal with the hor horrific things about that history, right? So at the bare minimum, we got to wait till they gone before we can be on the, on the phone, on the web, cackling about picking cotton. And it's like, you know, you would think if the white partner is truly in tune and cares about their the blackness of their partner, they would be like, you know, babe, that's a little, we shouldn't because, you know, we have to be just careful about how we move about, go about things because we're in America, but whatever. Who, who am I to tell her what the fuck to post on her page? I'm not telling her what the fuck to post on her page. I'm just saying, bitch, pink cotton, not fucking funny. Everybody in America is crashing the fuck out right now, except black people. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because y'all starting to understand just how much black people in this country do for y'all. How much we put ourselves to the flame for everybody to enjoy or live in peace, right? Because prior to this moment, we thought that that was the only way that, that we could get peace. Not only that, but everybody as a whole. But we are simply watching everybody crash the fuck out because instead of y'all actively helping and doing your part, you sat back and you collected off of the work that black people and people of color actually did, right? So now is at the point where not even people of color can, can benefit off of the work that our ancestors and we had to do up until today this moment now we are watching canadians line up to not pay their fucking bills and it is working it's forcing their country to literally change their laws and to do better behind them because everybody in canada collectively say you know what fuck the government i ain't i ain't, I ain't listening to a shit they, they they got the fucking say if they're not taking care of us we're not taking care of it, them. And that's just what it's going to be. Bottom line. I'm keeping my money to myself. I ain't paying a motherfucking bill. Right? And it's working for them. Everybody's like, in America, why we don't do this shit in America? Why we don't do this shit in America? You know why. You know why. Because y'all waiting for black people to take the first step. And we're not going to. We're not putting ourselves to that flame no more. Everybody's looking around them and they're like, well, what the fuck? Like, usually, usually they're black people are the first person to stand. We're not doing it. Because y'all, 
I'm sorry, what? Did we not just watch Affirmative Action be backwalked using the same token community that we told was tokens? It's two token communities that white people rely on. The Asian community and the Hispanic community. And they got both y'all asses to help backwalk the, the work, the hard work that we all collectively did. That we all collectively did for your generations to come and our generations to come. And y'all backwalked that shit. Now y'all crying and whining about the effects that we warned you of prior to you being used as a pawn and a tool. And now everybody's looking around waiting for us to take the first step. Baby, listen. There's a reason why our ancestors lasted through the bubonic plague, through the, tra the uh, transatlantic slave trade, through whooping cough, through the Great Depression, through every major historical event. There's a reason why our ancestors lasted through that shit. Because we know how to survive. We're good. Whether we got y'all help or not, we are good. But are y'all going to be good? When them white folks do what they planning to do with Project 2025, are y'all going to be good? No, baby, we're not going to take the first step. And no, we're not going to be. We, we know that when we decide to stop paying bills, y'all not going to actually come through. We're fully aware of that. And we finally got to a point where we said, you know what? We're good. <laughs> we're good either way. We got money. Some of us don't have money, but still how to make shit shake. Um, we know how to survive through anything. We're good. Canada, do your biggest and your baddest. America, when y'all finally wake the fuck up and decide to actually start pulling y'all on weight, then we will meet you at the table. Don't worry about what I got on my face. It was a face mask. Then we will meet you at that table. But until then, don't look our way. Don't look for us to carry no weight. We're good. We've done it for centuries. We're good. Black bodies are built for luxury, but forced into brutality. Let's talk about it. Our hair is literally so delicate that we actually need silk and satin so we need to be laying on luxury materials in order to care for our hair. Our skin is moisturized best by natural oils and butters from the earth such as shea butter, coconut butter, sweet almond oil, etc. Our skin absorbs the sun and turns it into valuable energy. When we say black men and women are literally built for luxury and we were kings and queens, we literally are. Like our bodies are made for luxury and we have been forced into brutality. So long story short, treat yourself to something nice today um, and every day because our ancestors didn't endure so much for you to be treating yourself like you're still a beast of burden when we are actually luxury beings. My question that I give to every podcast hoster and everyone who's in the room is why would a nation consisted of over 330 million people give the power to the average public person or citizen who they don't believe is intelligent enough to tie their own damn shoes to put a person in office who is going to affect their lives and yours? Yes. If they don't think you are smart enough yes. to even know what you're eating or reading labels, why would I give you the power to put somebody in there who's going to mess up my life? Yes. We have to think here. Yes. To vote means to wish, Ooh. etymologically. Yes. So if you just say vote, 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 you are a fool, fool, fool. Ooh. I'll just say it that way. Ooh. If you don't put money behind your candidate, you will not get one. What Ooh. you will get is a person who looks like they're going to fight for you, but they are fighting for the person who pays them. Ooh. Yes. That's how this goes. The number one thing you must do when it comes to looking at specifically presidential candidates is who is funding them. You want it, yo boys. And then I want some grandbabies. I want to sit on a picket fence. I want to. Have, I want. I want to sit with my girl. We're gonna drink tea and lemonade, eat watermelons, pop pecans, crack some shell peas, boil us some food. We're gonna eat some cornbread and some beans. We're gonna travel around the world. We may go to Belize or London or Paris or wherever else. While my kids are growing up good in America, but it ain't gonna be because people like you can't pull your head out your ass and think about the circumstances of the choices that you make, either not to vote or to vote for this maniacal maniac that said, I'm gonna put the Billy Club back in the hands of the boys in blue. Now we talk about politics, we talk about power abroad, we talk about Mexican Americans coming across. Mexican Americans, I'm not fearful that they're going to unlock. People don't do research anymore. But once she win, 
she'll shut the haters up. <laughs> okay, question. What research have you done? What research have you done? Have you been to her website to see that she doesn't have any policies on there? And every time she tells us she's going to do something, she never has a way that she's going to do it. Have you not heard her flip-flopping? One minute she says she's not going to do something only for black people. And then the next minute she's talking to Al Sharpton and saying that she's going to give black people reparations. You didn't hear her say that she will definitely ban fracking. And then two, and then later on, I will not ban fracking. She's flip-flopping so that she can get your vote. You know what I'm saying? She's telling you anything that you want to hear so that you can vote for her. But let's be honest. The past years have been shitty. Taxes high. Gas high. Food high. They taking all of these taxes out of American citizens' checks and giving it to illegal immigrants. And those illegal immigrants are coming from other countries under the condition that, hey, you can get out of jail, but you're going to have to leave here. You're going to have to go to America. So now we're housing, taking care of, feeding illegal immigrants while there are still hungry, homeless Americans. So at some point as a black person, you have to open your mind. Let's stop being the prisoners and the prison guards at the same time. You know, you can't protect the people that's doing the shit to you. You do research. Tell me what you like about Kamala other than the fact that she's a black woman president. Tell me, have you done your research? I don't think you have. Because if you did do some research, you will see that between the two candidates that we have, Donald Trump and Kamala, Kamala has ain't got nothing on Trump. His policies, how he's saying he's going to do it. He's telling you exactly where money is going to come from, how he's going to do what he's doing. And it's all to make America move forward. We are not moving forward. We are doing bad right now. So y'all do your research. Because guess what? Hater. Hey. Hey. Bitch, I would love to vote for the first black woman president but I want her to represent us well and I want her to do a good job and right now they are not doing a good job and that's why I switched from Democrat to Republican and that's just this year you know what I'm saying you vote for the person's views that you that you agree with each each time you vote you look at the views and the policies and you vote according to that voting on on skin color is exactly what Martin Luther King told us not to do. He wanted us to be judged by the content of our character, not our skin. And we fought for that. We fought to be judged on our character and not the content of our skin. So judge Kamala on her character, what she's done, her history. You understand? You do a little more research, mama. Sure, no problem. I can tell you why black people don't like her. First of all, you don't bring Megan Thee Stallion to a serious event, okay? And make her dance and get her backup singers to dance and all this shit, thinking we don't care about policies. That's very insulting, okay? We care about more than that. That's a form of pandering. I don't even know if you know what that word means. Next, me as a black man, I'm not okay with her holding innocent people on death row to keep them from slave labor, you know what I'm saying, knowing that they're innocent. Go fact check, that's true. Then when asked on national TV, what is she gonna do specifically for black people? The bitch said, well, I'm not gonna do anything specifically for black people, but you did something for the Asian community, you did something for the ABC community, you did something for the Native Americans, but you're not gonna do anything for the black community? Fuck Kamala Harris, okay? She's not black, okay? Absolutely not. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No. I hope that answers your question. That's why black people don't like Kamala Harris. So stop asking that stupid ass question. Ooh, black preacher, you're not supposed to tell this. Y'all listen. The man is weak and the woman is overpowering. The girls are gonna be successful. The boy ain't gonna be trash. Every time. You don't have to clap. 
See, we doing something different here because I'm trying to help y'all with that. But I'm talking about the average home now. The girls got all the degrees, all the diplomas, everything. And the boy is shy. Because it takes a different kind of raising for a man. It takes a man to raise a man. And it takes a man to lead a man. I don't care. You know they're going to take, I, I'm about to take this out the message. You, you know YouTube ain't trying to hear this. Somebody told me the other day, they deleting comments and deleting, no, they were deleting all the shares. So everybody that shared my mom, mama, they lied, mother, they lied to you message, they're deleting your shares. Facebook. Pulling your shares. If you shared it, they're deleting it. Now that was Mother's Day. Back in May. Why y'all, why did you, that started this week. Why are you doing that now? Kamala. I mean, people start sending me the screenshot. Maybe, did, did that happen to anybody in here? Happened to you? Happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, they deleted your share. You tried to share. Mother, they lied to you with somebody. And they deleted it. Because whoever you shared it, they don't want them to know that they lying to her. Hmm. Let's just get her in office. Well, can we talk about the policies? Can we talk about something other than her might be in black. <laughs> no, ain't no might. She's not black. But I'm saying, like, why is that the only thing y'all talking about? I promise to do a great job with this economy. You're over the economy now. You're there now. You're there. You're in there. Right now. Amen. Yeah. Now, as you see, this pastor said that he put out the truth and Facebook censored it. The same thing happened on this very app. They don't want diversity of ideas. They just want ideas coming from one direction because they have one agenda in mind. But we could do something about that. Let's like, share, comment. Let's do what we have to do to push everybody out there to get the truth out there. Don't tell me you want truth, but then you hear truth and don't share it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you hear truth, you spread it like they spread these lies. He said that his videos are doing fine until they put Scamala on the ballot. And when they did that, censorship started happening. And you know she feels a certain way about censorship. She's saying that certain people shouldn't be on certain platforms. I mean, she outright said that Donald Trump should not be on a platform. And this is the same way they feel about Christians as well. If you're standing up for biblical truth, they want you silence. Think about that when you're talking about you're a Christian and you're voting Democrat. Just think about it. Peace. friends are black and I say nigga all the time. Every time we go to a family meeting or something, I say nigga, we're playing this fucking dice, don't matter what you fuck. I say nigga, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> a 
thousand lashes. Thousand lashes. Mm hmm. That's what you need. I tell y'all, boy, y'all prove my interracial dating theory every day on this motherfucking app. One day, y'all gonna actually have to admit that maybe Benny Ray just know what the fuck he talking about. Maybe he know a little something. So that must, that's the cookout y'all be wanting to invite all of them to. Mm, that's crazy. See, you know, I ain't really ever, I don't see too many videos of, of you know what I'm saying, pale colored ladies with black dudes, you know what I'm saying, saying that, acting like, I don't really see now, I could be wrong, but I, I, I just don't see them. Please tag me in it. Show me the videos. But I've I've made several videos before of black chicks who date pale men and uh, have said that they be calling them the N-word and saying the N-word and all of that shit. But this, I, bro, I thought it was a green screen. I didn't know that they was actually took it. I thought the girl, I thought the black chick was green screen recording a lie from the white. That's a man. And she going to give him kids if they already don't have them. So all this zaddy worshiping that y'all be doing on this app, Bonitas, it makes sense now. It makes sense. Y'all be wanting them. Y'all be wanting to take them and cause. That's why the whole black wife effect challenge. Y'all love that shit because y'all, it's not that y'all don't like black men. Because y'all are taking them white men and then cosplay them as the very black men that y'all like. And now you, let, you, you, you want them to call you the N-word. That's crazy. It ain't that them pale men treat y'all better. It's that you think more highly of them. So you'll get with them and treat them better because of their skin color, but then still want to cosplay them as the black men that you actually really like. The aesthetic of the black man that you actually like and are used to and are comfortable with. That's just... <sighs> So all that rhetoric y'all be yapping when y'all see them athletes with them with them snow bunnies and all that, it be projection. It be projection because that's what y'all be doing when y'all be over with them pale boys. For luxury, write a common goal. Let's go ahead and join with the Kukax clan. I mean, if they're willing to fight against what's going on, we welcome you. We welcome you and we will not look at your past and the things that you've done to people of other colors because we have a common goal now we can overlook all of that and we can join hands and we can join the good fight what do you say skinheads will you join us so real quick i don't like being on camera so you get to see the other color tree this woman is very problematic she is calling on the triple k a terrorist organization another white t supremacist group to align themselves with her and other Latino or Hispanic communities to attack the black community. She is also saying we'll forgive you for your past atrocities. No, we won't. The Triple K has also uh, lynched um, Mexican indigenous people. They have also caused so much pain and damage to our community, so much violence. White tea nationalist, white tea supremacy, it is still very active in this country. And they do target um, Mexican, Latino, Hispanic, or other people within our community. But we can't align ourselves with white tea supremacy. We can't. This whole anti-black, anti-indigeneity racism that is coming from our community, from the Hispanic Latino community, needs to stop. White tea supremacy don't care about us. They are just using us as a weapon to attack the black community. We need to cut this shit out quick, like super quick. People who support Democrats, come here. I will never forgive y'all for letting these Democrats play in y'all face, knowing good and well, maybe you don't know, that the Democrats burned down Black Wall Street. <laughs> I will never forgive y'all for that. I, I just... Me and my co-hosts are gonna expand on this, but police officers shouldn't even be a thing. And I'm not even referring to the Europeans who created the police force to form slavery under another name. I'm just speaking in general, because at the end of the day, Police officers are still human beings. Police officers could bleed like you and me. They have emotions like you and me. And because of that reason, you never know their true intentions. So these police corporations are hiring murderers and rapists and child molesters and people who've been bullied in school and are now seeking out revenge. These are a lot of people that hire into police. You know what I mean? To make society a better place. So 
How I look at it is that a human being should never have the power to police over another human being just because they have a badge. They could run red lights, they could wave their gun around it. No, you're still human. You're still human. Humans are egotistical, etc. And it's like, I believe there should be no police. There should be no prison. It should just be everyone has free will. Because at the end of the day, it's not your purpose as a human being to lock other people up and take them away from their freedom. That's not your purpose. Leave that to God. If people are evil internally and they're putting out evil in the world, karma is going to handle that for them. The universe, God is going to handle that for them. That's not your job. A human being should never have the power to police over another human being. Get rid of all cops. The Black Panther Party had over 65 survival programs. Yeah, you might have heard of their free breakfast program, but what about these others? How about the People's Free Ambulance Service? This was first started by the Winston-Salem, North Carolina chapter. And it was all started because this 15-year-old black boy got shot. He really didn't die because he got shot. He really died because the county ambulance refused to move his body. Panther said, we already know what this is. We didn't wait for the government to figure things out. They trained as EMTs. Then they converted an old hearse into an ambulance. And they got the job done. But you know about seniors against a fearful environment. Safe. On the first of the month, Panthers walked with seniors to cash their checks so they wouldn't get robbed. Prior to the Panthers, the seniors had gone to the Oakland Police Department. Instead of protecting them, they told them just walk closer to the curb. Man, we all we got. There was even a free plumbing and maintenance program. I mean, how many of our homes fall into disrepair because of lack of funds? According to the American Housing Survey, blacks are twice as likely as whites to live in inadequate homes. I'm talking about in 2021. Well, the Panthers provided maintenance service for free to the community. They also had a free pest control program. I lived in Houston. Y'all got bugs. But let's be real. Living with roaches and rats is a public health crisis. There is no reason that in the wealthiest nation in the world, people should live under these conditions. And that's what I'm trying to get at. When you realize that capitalism needs you to be poor, he ain't poor because there's no resources, no talent or people. Nah, the economic system we live under has to be flipped on its head for these conditions to end. No amount of charity will end poverty. And that's what the survival program showed everybody. By relying on ourselves, by refusing to feed this economic system. Only then can we prepare for a real revolution. The survival programs were much needed services, but they were also opportunities to provide political education. They were organizing tools. Imagine a political candidate whose whole platform is about ending poverty, for real. Let's not be hungry again. Let's not be unhealthy again. Let's not live in squalor again. Let's not be unhoused again. But you ain't gotta believe me. Read the Black Panther Party Service to the People programs by David Hilliard and the Dr. Huey P. Nuda Foundation. Have you seen what the police union has said about this? No, I haven't. So the police union says your driving leading up to this traffic incident quote, uh, put, quote, others in great risk of danger. So okay. they're accusing you of driving in a dangerous manner. Okay. And then they say in the aftermath, you're saying you were cooperating. Right. The police union says you were not cooperating. Right. It sounds like you very much dispute what the police union is saying. I mean, you know, everybody has their own side, their own version, you know, and I feel like they do that, you, you know, to kind of protect, you know, um, the officer, which is right. You know, you got to have, you know, your teammate back. You know, but I feel like at the end of the day, you know, um, if you if you like roll up on somebody all hostile, knocking on their window, and they already had got their ID, you know, what I'm saying ready for you. It's not like I said, you're not getting my ID, you're not getting my ID. You know, it was one of those situations where it's like, here go my ID, sir. You know, and I let back up my window. He said, let it down. I let it down. Then that's when it went from zero to ten. The other officer came in, just pulled me out. What is the discipline you want? Uh, for, for me personally, I think that police officers that uh, that did that to Tyreek shouldn't be in that position. They should be let go. Look at the guy that just kicked him right there. That guy should be fired. That's out of control. The guy that that jumped in, put him in a chokehold. There's no place for a police officer to have a badge that operates like that when Tyreek wasn't being uh, aggressive or violent or fighting back in any capacity. What, you know, that was horrendous how they treated him. Does they didn't treat him like a human being. Does Tyreek There's no place for police officers to be on the force. Uh, Drew, I agree with that. Does Tyreek agree with you, though? I, I Of course. He wants them fired. Uh, of course. He thinks they should be fired? Well, I'll let Tyreek speak to that. That's, that's my opinion. He and I have not had that specific discussion, but certainly I would recommend to Tyreek and the legal team, that that's something that we pursue. 
Um, you know, I think he deserves an apology from each and every one of those police officers involved. And the ones that abuse their authority and power should not be on the force. Hey, why are we at the prison? Oh, I'm here looking at the Democrats 2025 plan. This is the Democratic 2025 plan. Get a good look at the Democrats 2025 plan. You know, that's the only thing they ever done. The only thing the Democrats have ever done successfully is build prisons. That's it. Mm. Build prisons, give away money to women that have eight kids because they want to keep them on welfare so they can vote for them and send money to Ukraine. Those are the only three things Democrats have ever done for everybody. Give away money to eight women with 1,800 kids, send money to Ukraine so they can bomb stuff, give money to dictators. You know, they gave all that money to Iran and build prisons. Oh, That's it. My goodness. All they did was build prisons. They, they, they want to lock up all the men. You know the Democrats hate men. So they want to lock up all the men. They building all these prisons. And while you in jail, they send you woman welfare so they can keep a voting Democrat. That's all they ever done. That's the Democrats probably 2025 plan. This is it right here. Take a good look at it. Because they ain't done nothing else for America. They ain't for America. Kamala ain't for America. She don't even have no kids. So you know I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Nancy Pelosi don't got no kids. Kamala don't got no kids. AOC don't got no kids. But they want to send your, your father to jail. That's what they doing over here. Oh my goodness. So if you like this, you need to like the page. Subscribe to the page. You need to follow the page. You need to get your mom and your daddy out here to, to follow the page because I'm, I'm giving you straight talk. Straight from the horse's mouth. I want me to tell you what I don't understand. Grown folks who lie and then get mad when you catch them in their lie. Play all these reverse psychology games trying to flip the situation because they feel some type of way that you done found out that they's a liar. Abdul is the head of the Taliban. He is still the head of the Taliban. And I told Abdul, don't do it anymore. You do it anymore. You're going to have problems. And he said, why do you send me a picture of my house? I said, you're going to have to figure that out, Abdul. And for 18 months, we had nobody killed. Wow. We did have an agreement negotiated by Mike Pompeo. President Trump's story. Agreement. Let's see if that's This is my number true. one favorite of all time. When we were negotiating with the Taliban, while well, President Trump was still the president, um, President Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but he wanted a conditions-based withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you do what we tell you to do, and then we will start pulling troops back slowly as long as you abide by our rules. It's President Trump Mike, and Mike Pompeo, and they are talking to Taliban leadership in the room, and they had one translator in the room. President Trump looked at the, at the Taliban leader and said this, I want to leave Afghanistan, but it's going to be a conditions-based withdrawal. And translator translated and he said if you harm a, a hair on a single american i'm going to kill you and the translator goes and trump goes tell him what i said reached in his pocket pulled out a satellite photo of the leader, the leader of, the, of the taliban's home and handed it to him shut up got up and i think y'all just lack critical thinking skills in all honesty you can't argue with what I just fucking said on my post. So you're just going to say I'm the weak. We are the weakest link and they laughing at us. No, stupid. They laughing at you. That's why they sudden Megan Thee Stallion and Quavo to come talk to you. They knew you would like to shake your ass. Now do what you do. I'm, do what you do. I'm about to just make common sense out of shit. TikTok gave me a warning. So I got to be calm about this. Kamala Harris' net worth is $8 million. Now, I'm about to show you simple math. If she made $218,000 for the last 30 years, that's only $6.5 million. The person that they're laughing at is you when they tell you they fist to tax the fucking rich. Pay attention to these damn numbers. $70 million, you really think they fist to go get unrealized gains? You really fist to think they fist to just, here, take my money? Get the fuck out of here. Somebody tell me how, how Dr. Biden got this type of fucking money making $100,000 a year. Huh? Tell me. Hillary been in office forever. We all know this. How the fuck she got 120? You the dummy. You the only person that can't critically think. You think they really about to go tax the rich? Or their kids? You think they physically go take, say, come here, 
Give me Chelsea. Give me, give me 15 of that, that 30 back. You the jackass! Now I'ma do, i am I want you to do just like you doing all your goddamn pictures. Now turn your ass around. This is a Louis, baby. It won't break. I'ma whoop your motherfucking ass to you motherfucking. Oh, I almost hit myself. Well, since ABC can't do their job, let me do their job for them. We're going to fact check yesterday's debate and all of Kamala's claims. Starting off with her claim that she will not take people's guns away, specifically that she will not place a ban on assault weapons. It's business about taking everyone's guns away. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. While she said that on the debate stage last night, in 2019, Kamala Harris supported mandatory buyback of assault weapons. That same year, she said that she'll ban imports of all AR-15 style weapons if Congress doesn't act. And in 2022, when she was the VP, she called for assault weapons ban after back-to-back -back mass shootings. Kamala also claimed that after the Charlottesville incident that Trump called neo-Nazis and KKK people very fine people. Let's remember Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say? There were fine people on each side. This narrative has been debunked over and over, even by left-leaning fact-checkers like Snoops. Here's Snoops saying, no, Trump did not call neo-Nazis and white supremacists very fine people. Mala also claimed that she's never supported a federal ban for fracking and that she'll make sure that Pennsylvanians are able to frack. I made that very clear in 2020. I will not ban fracking. I have not banned fracking. As there's only one problem with that. During a town hall in 2020 when she was running for president, she actually said that she does support a federal ban on fracking. Swells have become a common sight, yet the toxic impacts of fracking on the community are immense, yeah. from contaminated groundwater to poisonous emissions. Yeah. Will you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking your first day in office, adding the United States to the list of countries who have banned this devastating practice? There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah. She mentioned Project 2025 over 15 times during the debate. The only problem with that is that Trump disavowed Project 2025 over and over. But for some reason, the moderators must have forgotten about that. Hmm, convenient. Over and over last night, Kamala made the same claim that Trump wants to impose a federal ban on all abortions. Again, the moderators failed to point out that Trump has over and over said that he wouldn't sign a federal abortion ban. Now, if I can do this simple fact check, why did ABC fail to do this very simple fact check? Is it because they're partisan hacks and they want to cover for Kamala? Probably so. If you guys like me fact checking like this, then make sure you follow my account. Put Kamala Harris in her place, which is the White House on November 5th. I just want to say she's already in the White House. Yes. Treating it like a Section 8 apartment, not doing a motherfucking thing. She ain't doing a damn thing. Yep. Everybody was able to really identify what issues each candidate stands on. I think that, you know, it's important that everybody does their due research after this, after especially hearing what the candidates had to say and which side they stand on and where the moderators said they flipped beforehand and what exactly was going on. I think the thing that everybody should take away from tonight is that context is important. You heard Kamala Harris keep mentioning Project 2025, and that has nothing to do with Trump. You heard her keep skipping over the border issue, and she kept skipping over the migrant issue, and that should speak very loud to especially black America as to why she can't speak to why you guys haven't been prioritized during her administration. You also heard her admit to how much she has been able to do or heard her claim all that she has done during this administration. So I would ask that you all please stop making excuses for all the things that she hasn't done by saying she couldn't do them because she was the vice president. And so taking away from this debate, yes, I hope that you guys would think of all of those things and, you know, vote based off the facts and not, you know, just somebody else's feelings. I just want to share my take on the Haitians in, you know, all the chaos that's going on in Springfield, Ohio with the Haitians and, um, you know, this social outcry and this community outcry that's going on over there. But before I say any of my points, I just want to put it out there that I am using my free expression in accordance to the TikTok guidelines. So what I'm about to say is based on my opinions. I'm expressing my opinions. It's not treated as fact. I'm not trying to spread any misinformation. I'm just merely giving my opinion. So please do not take any of my statements as fact. Now, moving on. 
what I'm disgusted about this whole issue with the Haitians terrorizing communities and now snatching up animals and people's pets and everything. I don't like the fact that, you know, the media wants to debunk it like people in Ohio, these um, residents in Springfield are lying, they're like blatantly lying. I really don't think that people in Ohio and Springfield are just going to start, you know, having this outcry and this uproar and this disgust about what's going on there, sharing their stories, some of them even going viral just for shits and giggles. And for the media, for left, you know, left wing media to try and spin that these people are lying or it's a hoax, this is not what's going on, it's being debunked, the city mayor, you know, was saying that no, this is not true. No. I don't think these people who are telling their stories to social media, you had that one black woman who was crying her eyes out. You've had many people at a council committee meeting, you know, expressing their disgust about what is going on in the community. These Haitians are terrorizing communities. That means that they are going on a mission. And you know what? Even if people want to say that, no, they don't eat those animals. They're not eating cats. They're not eating dogs. They're not eating. You got to understand that Haitians, their culture is so prevalent with voodoo. They may not be using it to eat, but trust and believe they are probably using those animals for ritual sacrifices. Okay. That's part of their culture. They are using these barbaric practices, snatching up people's pets or any pets roaming around, any animals for ritualistic purposes. And the mere fact that you have a whole swarm, a whole bunch of Haitians just coming to one central area and terrorizing communities just to do these barbaric practices, they're obviously out here on a mission. Why else would they be there? I know there are other countries that have, you know, these cultures and these practices. Even in Africa, they do believe in using witchcraft, muti, you know, juju and all that stuff. And they have these ritualistic practices. But I can tell you one thing, you're not finding a whole bunch of Africans just going randomly just to certain uh, neighborhoods and terrorizing people and making them fearful. You're not seeing that. Or you're not seeing that with Asians. Asians eat cats and dogs and all these other animals and pets and rodents. But do you see them terrorizing other people's communities? Are they coming here terrorizing? So the fact that they are here, you got to understand that these people are also using those things for ritualistic practices. It's part of their culture. And I'm sorry, but we are reaching a time right now towards the end of the year where we are going to be in a solstice next month is october we got halloween rituals and a lot of demonic occultic practices are going to be happening you had a woman who died recently she went to um haiti because she wanted to become a voodoo priestess and she died mysteriously under mysterious circumstances that shit's no joke and especially when you deal with Haitians and voodoo, they don't play. So, you know, for the media to just try and spin and say that these people, that the community is lying about these stories, they're embellished, they're exaggerated, or they're hoaxes, I don't think so. I think there's something sinister going on there. And these people are there for a mission. They're there for a purpose. They're not just doing stuff just because. Black people don't get lynched in the hood. And hearing about J.V. McGee and living in North Carolina now, it just made me think, like, there's way too many of us out here with that thing on us, if you know what I'm saying, to allow some shit like that to happen. Let me go back and clarify. I'm in no way, shape, or form glorifying living in poverty. The hood and the way that I'm using it is really just a placeholder for a living in black community with people that's about that action. You know, it's crazy to suggest that it's usefulness in that street shit. And the way that people from that life navigate, especially when everybody out here cracking jokes and making skits about these young niggas. But the reality is that white people rely on gangs, too. 
their gangs are just called police. We need some new sort of green book community communication that allows us to know that when we're going to these places and spaces, we are being looked out for. Black Americans always talk about black culture, this black culture, that. But do you know what this is? What's up, y'all? Uh, so before I launch, I just want to preference everything I'm about to say with this knowledge right here. I am a first generation Nigerian American. I was born in D.C., but my entire family is from Nigeria. I am 100 percent African. I took a DNA test. I wasted $100 for absolutely no reason because that motherfucker came back and said I am 100 percent West African, Nigeria, Benin, Togo. I just threw the money away. I don't know why. Now, why do I bring that up? I bring that up so that y'all understand that when I say what I'm about to say, I'm speaking from a place of expertise and experience because ultimately I know my people. I'm not going to sit here in front like there isn't a large subset of the African population, both here and abroad, particularly in the older generation, that hate black people for no reason. Ultimately, it's just a lot of self-hatred and crabs in the bucket mentality because they want to feel superior and they see black people as an easy lick, right? Which is ironic because most African nations, when it comes to their government and their economy, are in shambles. As a matter of fact, Nigeria is the scammer capital of the world. But regardless, I want to reassure y'all that not all Nigerians, excuse me, not all Africans think like this. A lot of us don't think like this because we understand the sacrifices that black people had to make in this country, what they had to go through in this country, and ultimately how that benefited us, especially the immigrants who came here from those African nations. And without what y'all did in the 60s and 70s and all the shit you had to go through, we couldn't be here today, you know, working towards success and taking care of our family. So even though I don't have to, I would like to apologize to every black person who saw that video and felt offended and reassure you that we do not all think like this. Ultimately, that little nigga tripping, bro. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with him. It wouldn't surprise me if he was like 50, 60 years old because a lot of them in the older generation, they got that crabs in the bucket mentality. But this nigga can't be anything more than 27, 20 years old. I really don't understand why he, why, what compelled him to make that video. Ultimately, I don't know where that little nigga's at, but that entire video reeks of black people bullied me when I was younger for being FOB. So I'm going to spend the rest of my life shitting on y'all every which way possible, which is stupid, right? And I get it. I grew up African in the 90s. Trust me, I understand. I can see where that came from. But ultimately, that's no that's not an excuse to at your big age, right? To be to be talking that type of nonsense. We supposed to be enlightened and educated in 2024 and you just ignorant as a motherfucker. Like what's wrong with you, bro? I hate when I see content like this because all it does is spark the diaspora wars all over again. I get it. Africans are different than black people culturally, everything like that, but we are all one people at the end of the day. At the root of it on some Dr. Umar shit, we all the same people at the end of the day, right? And when you when this kind of talk start it just sows unnecessary division like we got bigger problems as a people both africans and black people we got bigger problems that we could be working together to solve and this dumbass nigga won't be on the internet in his uh, uh warrior garb talking about oh what y'all know about culture man shut the fuck up